the presentation is going to have the theme as skill development for sustainable and green mobility. And the person who is going to take the presentation is uh, Dr. Manish Mishra, who works in National Skill Development Corporation as an executive vice president of the strategy division. He has extensive experience in consulting, training, program management, sustainability, and CSR. He has, he has led the prestigious World Bank Skill India Mission Operation Project at the Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship. He has been the part of the team that developed the capacity building ecosystem for UIDAI, Unique Identification Authority of India, one of the biggest identity products, uh, projects in the world. He has consulted with many public and private sectors, uh, sector entities and um, on organization design, capability building, performance management and impact evaluation. He has written several research papers, case studies, and newspaper articles. He is invited speaker to various forums, a senior member of Global Institute of Food, Health, Nutrition, University of Cambridge, and is a visiting faculty at IIMs. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together as we call Dr. Manish Mishra, EVP Strategy, NSDC, with a round of applause. Can we have you here on the stage, sir? A little louder, please, of course, after lunch. Thank you. So we have Dr. Manish Mishra. Good afternoon. And thanks for this uh, nice introduction. As uh, has been said that I represent uh, National Skills Development Corporation. Well, this uh, is the post-lunch session. And uh, most of the post-lunch sessions that one has seen, they have their landmine of sessions. Let me try and keep uh, it a little more engaging uh, and try and finish it quickly. So what we do at NSDC is uh, something that I like to start with. So we were, start, uh, we were set up as uh, uh, as an organization that will catalyze private sector investment in the skilling uh, space. And that happened in 2008 when uh, we were incubated by the Ministry of Finance. Uh, 2014 with the uh, Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship coming into uh, being, uh, we are since then associated with the Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship. Uh, we are a public-private partnership organization. And uh, since our coming into being, what we have done is we have tried to create a system through which uh, large uh, skill training related schemes can be run, the hard and soft infrastructure that we have created. Uh, we have set up training infrastructure across the country. Uh, there have been institutions like PMKKs and close to 4,500 training partners that we have set up across the length and breadth of the country. Uh, we have also set up sector skill councils that uh, reach out and work very closely with the industries in their sectors in order to ascertain the requirement of the sector and then create programs that would cater to the uh, skilling needs of that particular sector. Uh, in terms of numbers, we would have trained close to 15 million uh, in the publicly funded Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana, close to 20 million in the uh, fee-based programs that we uh, fashionably call them because they are fee paid by the uh, candidate or by the CSR or by the organizations themselves. So this is the universe that we have created over the last 15 years. And uh, of late what we are doing is we are working uh, uh, in the area of future of work related skilling. We are recently uh, were instrumental in organizing the uh, G20's educational work group meeting, which was about future of work, where we did a large format exhibition. We also 
uh, held conferences on the sidelines of it, and of course the educational work group meeting. And uh, what we have done there is to identify sectors that are getting disrupted uh, uh, as a result of technology, maybe the uh, other mega trends that are impacting some of the other sectors as well, and are trying to create, trying to pave way for the future, and uh, to one, uh, do the assessment of what kind of skill requirement would be needed, and then where that skill manpower would be come from, and how would they be prepared for the job roles that we uh, think would be useful as the uh, as we get into the future of work. So, uh, since we're talking about getting into the future, uh, um, you cannot really uh, make rules, or you cannot really uh, uh, build strategies for the future of work by looking at the past, and looking at the logic of the past, and therefore, uh, one has to be very, very forward-looking, embrace the change, look at what is happening, try and anticipate what might happen, and then look at creating the skill man power pool on the basis of that. I'll quickly uh, talk about uh, uh, what is our approach towards looking at any sector. And since we are talking about mobility here, uh, it, it, is, it is no exception. Uh, all these sectors are getting impacted because of the global and demographic changes that are taking place, the climate energy related transition that is taking place, and the technological innovations that are taking place. Uh, mobility more so is getting impacted by the increased urbanization, uh, also the changes that one, one, that one is seeing through uh, uh, various models of ownership of asset to hiring of those assets. Then there is an environmental uh, uh, asks on the industries and mobility happens to be uh, one of those industries where that has to come up to uh, this challenge and try and find solutions. Uh, the resources scarcity and climate uh, sustainability. And uh, then on the technological front you have, uh, and you uh, would have uh, listened to many speakers before me about the uh, technological advancements and the kind of uh, changes they are bringing about in a particular industry. So, uh, while examining this uh, mobility sector and what exactly is causing some of these changes, we tried to look at what are some of the context factors in terms of what drives changes in these industries. And you have something like India's NDC uh, commitments where you're talking about uh, 40% of your total energy requirement being met through non-fossil fuel. You're talking about creating carbon sinks, doing a lot of forestation, et cetera, in order to uh, reduce the carbon emission or absorb the carbon that you, have, uh, you are generating. Then you have net zero target. And uh, by that, you mean um, um, uh, uh, moving to clean mobility and uh, also uh, achieving the target of net zero by 2070. Then uh, the smart cities program, which are primarily the enablers uh, of uh, green, fossil, uh, green uh, energy driven uh, uh, transport, and also uh, are, are designed in a way in which uh, they consume uh, less of the resources, uh, they actually reuse most of these resources, and therefore, that is again a trend that is uh, shaping the future. Then these policies of uh, uh, FAME 2, uh, wherein you're building the incentivization for people to buy vehicle, which is uh, uh, fueled by uh, green energy. You're talking about PLI and uh, uh, trying to give impetus to the industries that are manufacturing EVs and green uh, fuel-based uh, vehicles. And uh, the hydrogen policy recently India launched, though the uh, technology is still under uh, development and evolution, uh, but the policy is already there in order to enable uh, India's moving towards the hydrogen-led uh, transportation and economy. 
the modes that are tra transportation modes that are getting impacted uh, and railways uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure that there has been a fair bit of discussion around that but also the electric vehicles and switching on to the cleaner fuels and the shared mobility is what we're talking about um, there has been also a shift towards uh, um, sh sharing and also uh, using the transport as a service rather than just owning uh, uh, transport, which is how we conventionally think. And that has led to the emergence of variety of models. You are talking about ride hailing services. You are uh, also talking about carpooling and uh, a lot of other industries that have actually enabled this uh, transformation or this revolution like telecom, etc., is there. Uh, what now needs to be done in order to make sure that this transition from asset ownership to asset sharing takes place is a, is a, is a, is a, is a complete change in the mindset. You actually have to completely go on thinking of things like how do we improve the preventive maintenance, how do we design think the complete system in a very, very different way, and uh, the latest technologies like IoT, et cetera, and using a systematic, systemic approach. Now, for this to happen, you need to think of a workforce which not only understands this, but is also skilled in a manner in which to uh, effect these services. And that is what takes me to my next slide. And here is one example that I'm trying to uh, take to explain as to how the skill requirement is going to transfer, uh, uh, transform in a passenger car segment. Uh, on your left, the uh, quadrant number one talks about a personally owned driver driven uh, passenger car segment and the skills that you can associate with that kind of a segment is uh, driving is a key skill because the car has got to be driven the navigational skills that you, ne you need to have, the IC, because largely the cars that we are talking about, about 200 million cars that fly on Indian roads are largely IC, and the uh, penetration of EV has now just started, and the maintenance of uh, uh, the IC engines, etc., and upkeep of that kind. Cut to personally owned autonomous vehicles, which is where the future, it seems, is moving you suddenly see that there's a shift in the skills that would be needed in order to enable that ecosystem. So then you are talking about maintenance and upkeep, you're talking about electric systems, and you're talking about battery systems because no more this uh, car is uh, assemblage of some 10,000 odd moving parts, but it has become now increasingly, it, is, it, started, it will start looking like your iPhone. And that is the kind of skill that you uh, need to think about if you have to enable that system. Shared driver-driven, uh, so shared driver-driven, most of the industries, in, most of the companies in the riding, ride hailing industries or carpooling, et cetera, et cetera, you're seeing that they're shifting towards the greener vehicle. It makes a lot of business sense for a, for a, uh, ride hailing company or a sh or shared um, vehicle uh, uh, companies to move towards the greener fuel and in addition to the driving etc you are seeing the you need more and more of IT and digital skills the Ola's and the Ubers and the ride hailing service providers they are generating those kind of jobs which did not exist before the advent of such companies uh, you're talking about charging infrastructure management, you're charging about customer care, and those kind of job roles are becoming very, very important. Then the, uh, then the fourth generation, as we call it, which is shared autonomy, and then you talk about very different skills if you compare it with the quadrant one. You are talking about IT and digital primarily because there's nobody to drive you from, from, from point A to point B. Uh, it is people who are sitting at the back end creating those digital apps, creating those IT kind of enablements. They will be required in very large numbers. Uh, you are talking about uh, um, 
people who can work on green uh, fuel driven uh, driven vehicles um, you're talking about customer care and because now people are sitting there uh, in a car where they don't have to drive they have a lot of time at hand and this whole uh, car sharing experience has also got to be made in ex experience and there is a lot of possibility for one to uh, maybe bring services while people are there sitting in autonomous cars. You can have health related uh, services, you can have entertainment related services. So those kind of skills would also be in requirement which you could not associate with quadrant one or, the, or, or box named one because that was a very different. So it's the same, same service taking people from point A to point B, but the kind of skills that you see in one is dramatically different from the kind of services now that you are seeing in uh, quadrant four. And the training, coaching, education industry now needs to keep pace. Not only it needs to understand the changes, it also has to prepare the uh, uh, workforce of the future with the kind of skills that would enable this kind of a transformation. I'm, I'm not sure how many of you have come today uh, to this hall uh, using a public transport. Can we have a show of hands? How many of you have come here in a public transport? I, I have, okay. Okay. All right. One can count them on fingers, but I'm sure 10 years down the line, this picture is going to be very, very different. Right? And with that, the people who are behind providing you that transportation service from your homes to you know, conferences and seminars like these are going to be different. They need to be skilled differently and therefore our task is very, our task is cut out. We have to understand that, anticipate that and then provide training facility, create the kind of curriculum and take it to the universities and colleges so that we can prepare that future workforce. Your train systems are no different. There are a lot of experimentations that are going on with IoT, there are, uh, pilots that are going on hydrogen, you're talking about renewable uh, energy related uh, targets that you have. A lot of pilots are being done with AI, etc., which means a whole lot of new skills. Now, now the way we are seeing urban mobility, especially driven by the metros and the trains today, is going to undergo a very, very serious change. You're talking about cyber security expert. Hold your breath. You're also talking about AI and ML experts. Now you could have never associated them, say about 10 years ago, to a transport industry. It's going to be completely digitized. Uh, the train systems are also going to be automated. And you're talking about things like sustainable engineering. You're talking about things like programming, which is a very different skill set. So what I'm trying to impress upon here, ladies and gentlemen, is that we are getting into a future which is going to be very, very different. And there is no option but to embrace that change, understand that change, and prepare the workforce of the future for the same. Now, the big question is, how do we propose to do this? Or how are we attempting to do it? One is uh, to make sure that everybody understands at the population scale level that there is a serious climate change issue, that there are environmental issues, that there are changing technology related issues. Your schooling and education has got to fundamentally change. Thankfully, you have a framework like national uh, and the new education framework, a new education policy, which gives you that liberty to change curricula in order to bring in these elements more and more. Going forward, I'm sure you are going to see a lot of this content right from the stage of schools and also up to the level of colleges to one uh, uh, sensitize uh, the the future generation about these things the other thing uh, that the new education policy has allowed to do is to 
is to bring in skill development in a major, major way and embed it as a part of the regular curricula. Now, the UGC, the UGC has also come up with a framework which says about 30% of all this can actually be industry-led or industry-related skilling. And that can be counted as, as, as credits and that can actually get counted towards the, to the award of the curriculum. For this, and I was talking to somebody uh, during the lunch where they said the pace at which things are changing at the, at the shop floor in the industry, by the time they reach colleges or institutions, it's already too late. And therefore, uh, and therefore, it needs to be brought very early on in the curriculum. So it's not only about design of the curriculum, but designing it in such a way where part of that curriculum can actually be delivered at, in the, in the, in, on, at, at the shop floor in the industry. And that is where this apprenticeship and internship become very, very important. NSDC runs the uh, national apprenticeship scheme under which uh, we last uh, year we trained close to uh, 700,000 people. This year, the target is close to 1.5 million, going up to 5 million uh, in next two to three years' time. And that is the only way. And this is where there are so many industry uh, uh, champions here. My, what I will urge you to do is look at this option of providing people more work-based uh, training. Apprenticeship is a good opportunity where the government of India also gives you about 25% of the total payout that you uh, uh, pay towards uh, the candidates. Uh, and also help us build curricula which is, which is industry friendly, which is industry relevant. Because this is also evolving and we depend a great deal on the industry uh, consultations for understanding as to which way it is. Uh, we have a lot of research, etc. that we commission from time to time. But the but the biggest contributor is the industry itself, which would need a manpower of this kind. So we are ready to do, you know, sort of go that extra mile. The idea is uh, you also uh, please come forward and help us, help us do this. Uh, I'll quickly give you a snapshot of uh, what we are doing uh, in our skilling ecosystem as far as the green uh, transition is concerned. So they have. Uh, there are uh, quite a few sector skill councils that are doing some job already. They are working uh, in, under the guidance and with the, uh, in collaboration with NSDC and uh, there are sector skill councils of automotive, sector skill councils of green jobs, media, entertainment, IT. They are all uh, in partnership with the industry launching their courses, taking it to the universities, taking it to the colleges and making sure that they maintain very close ties with the, with the industry in order to provide the valuable uh, work-based experience. But for this to happen at an increasing pace, because we are talking about some four uh, crore uh, uh, people who are enrolled with the UG and PG programs, in order for this this, this generation to become industry ready, I think the industry participation would be required at a much uh, larger scale as compared to what it is today. So every time we try to reach you out, the sector skill councils reach you out, or the colleges, university ecosystem reaches you out, my, I, I would urge you, I will appeal that please help them because they are working for, a, uh, for, for bettering the skills of the current generation which is only going to help you. So. Please help us to help yourselves. We have set up a center of excellence at NSDC. And here we are trying to put, bring together all the efforts that are happening across the ecosystem, right from the developing of the curriculum to doing the research to uh, uh, working with the sector skill councils and the industry to do various projects on scaling of a variety of kind. We are reaching out to the universities, about 1,000 odd universities and 56,000 colleges that we have reached out to. And we are trying to put it all together in order to create this workforce of future for energy and climate uh, change related issues. So this is the single line mandate of the uh, Center of Excellence that NSDC has set up. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your patient hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, please, uh, a huge round of applause for uh, Dr. Manish Mishra, everybody.
Can we have Mr. Rakesh Prashad here on this stage to felicitate uh, Dr. Manish? Sir. Indeed, what a fruitful session to recall. Can we have the memento, please? Thank you, Dr. Manish Mishra. We are watching uh, doc, uh, Dr. Manish Mishra, Executive Vice President, Strategy National Skill Development Corporation. Thank you. We had a good time with you.